Welcome back everybody. Today I have the Blue Eddy Charger 1, which I did install in my previous vehicle, my Jeep Gladiator. But I recently traded that in for another minivan. And in today's video, I want to install this Blue Eddy Charger 1 in my Toyota Sienna, as well as talk about some of the major concerns that were brought up in that prior video. And the number one concern that most people bring up when it comes to any DC to DC alternator vehicle style charger in general is, will it blow up or damage my alternator? And the short answer to that is that that is definitely a possibility. Anytime you make any modifications to your vehicle's charging system, you are gonna increase the demands on that system. And so in my case, my alternator is actually just under this radiator hose. And if I have to change that alternator, that is gonna be a job that will take me several hours if I'm not gonna pay anybody to do it. And I have in fact changed an alternator on a Toyota Sienna before. And to change the alternator, you will need to remove at least the radiator fan and all of the antifreeze, so it is not exactly an easy job. But I don't personally believe that I'm gonna tax my system enough that I'm gonna need to replace the alternator in the short term. Now, if I have this thing in there for several years and my alternator dies, will I blame it on the Charger One? Hey, possibly, I don't know. I'm not here to, to sugarcoat it for you. If you're placing an additional demand on your system, you can cause additional damage. However, I am gonna operate within the design parameters of my alternator. And so therefore, for me personally, the reward of getting that Blue Eddy Charger 1 attached to my battery is much better or outweighs the risk of needing to replace that alternator. And to get started hooking the Charger 1 up to my alternator, I'm actually gonna hook it directly to my battery. From my battery, I'm gonna run the cable into, into this grommet right here, which is just behind the air filter box. It's kind of hard to see, and I apologize for making it so difficult, but it's directly behind this point, and it's a grommet about this big, so I can try to go through the main harness, which it looks like, if you can barely see the wires there, the main harness has been tampered with before. So folks on this Sienna have done something to it and I should be able to put those wires through there pretty easy. And the Charger One came with this cable, which is definitely long enough. It is longer, almost twice as long as my minivan. So it's definitely long enough to get it where I want it which is gonna be behind the driver's seat. All right, so this is a case of don't ask me how I did it, and I did it, and it was hard. I did manage to push through, so I pushed these through from that side, and then I used the hanger, and I pulled them through the rest of the way, about to where I want them here. To help ease the process, I popped my dash down, which this dash simply just very easily just pops up and down right out of the way. The next important thing I want to point out before I go further back with the wiring is I routed the wires up over the steering column well out of the way of the brake pedal or the gas pedal. And you can just barely see right up there in the corner where it goes up into the firewall. So it won't be interfering with any of my driving functions while I'm going down the road. And this brings me to my only true gripe about the Blue Eddy Charger 1. And that is that I wish that they put the fuse closer to the battery. I had a fuse that I intended to use for this project. I will pick up another one, but something very close to the positive cable on the battery. That way, if there are any shorts in the system down the line, I'll be able to save the battery and the charging system from those problems. The problems that could occur with this are possibly maybe a kink or a tear in the wire causing a short or a ground fault with this product, and that could be catastrophic for your battery system. That's probably the only true issue that I'm concerned with for this system. And so before I go any further, I'm gonna get everything else routed, set in place and check it. That way I make sure I don't have any problems before I plug it in. So this brings me to the next main concern that a lot of folks have brought up with the Blue Eddy Charger One. And that is that they don't believe that it will be compatible with their device. Well, this has a wide operating voltage voltage of in a 15 to 56 volt output at 10 amps max. So if you have a car style battery that will only accept 15 volts, then you'll get about 150 watts out of this. 
But if you have something like my applications, which typically want that 56 volt max at 10 amps, you're gonna get about 560 watts. And in fact, with my Jeep, I had seen about 580 watts max. So there is a little bit of wiggle room there. For the rest of my wire install, I'm just gonna route these wires through this kick panel and behind this seat, and I'll show you what I have for a battery in a few seconds. So with just a little bit of finagling, I opened this up, ran that wire through. It's coming out exactly where I want it right here. So the good news is I want this thing somewhere in this area. I currently have the Blue Eddy AC240, but I'm gonna replace this very soon with that new Blue Eddy Elite 200 v2 the ac240 was perfect for my jeep setup this thing is water resistant and dust proof and it sat in the back of my jeep and you can tell just by looking at how dusty it is that it lives up to his expectations but what i want to do now is get the rest of the charger one installed and hooked up to i'll start with the ac240 just to show you one charging condition but then i'll hook it up to a couple of other power stations as well go through and show you how to change the settings so that you can get it hooked up to whatever battery you want to charge so for the remainder of this process i really just need a two and a half millimeter allen key and a phillips head screwdriver so the phillips head screwdriver i'm going to use to attach the positive output into the circuit breaker this is a circuit breaker that you can use to either turn the device off so if you don't want to use it at all you can just disconnect it using the circuit breaker on off and then now <laughs> something i did in my previous video that i wanted to bring up which a lot of folks noticed and mentioned in the comments was in the install video i miss input the the positive into the negative and when I did that, I did in fact try to operate the Charger 1. But because the Charger 1 has reverse polarity protection, I was able to not blow up my system when I reverse installed that wire. And so now I've made sure to have it in the correct input. So positive into positive. And I just barely torqued that down. It's got one of those rounded heads. I don't want to strip out my Allen key and that is sufficient. I'm not worried about that coming out at all. Maybe I'll check it in a few weeks. So positive to positive, negative to negative. And I do want to point out the ends on these are crimped very nicely. And those crimpings do have essentially like a knurling or a chamfer that will allow the, the locking mechanism to grip down on those outputs or yeah those inputs very well and so i've got that in there again i'm just going to torque that down not too tight i don't want to strip out the heads perfect boom so now this is completely hooked up this is universal because it has these mc4 cables you could also just use your own custom leads and go straight into the output of the charger one per the charger one install instructions i am going to use a whoop see i don't like that now this is my ground, so that's okay, but that socket's too long. So when I go to the positive, I'm gonna need to get a shorter socket. So I do have some work gloves, so I might as well use them. I went to this 10 millimeter wrench, open end box end, and this box end I think is a little too snug because it has that ratcheting part in there. But what I wanna do now is just hook up this ground cable. And uh, in case you're curious, I do have iPro on as well. And to hook up the ground cable, I'm just gonna go straight to that battery. And the reason I, another reason I want to wear some gloves is this battery is looking a little old and because it is looking a little old, it has probably some battery acid on it. Um, it does have installation grease. And so I don't want that battery acid touching my, my clothes that I'm wearing or my skin because that will, uh, burn your skin and it will burn a little hole in whatever clothes makes contact with it. So unfortunately that's just not rolling off as easily as i had hoped and so for this side i just went with the 12 millimeter and my stubby wrench in order to avoid touching anything so i've got everything hooked up here except for that fuse that i do want to add later before i test the charging i'm going to go put my tools away i'm going to wash my hands one time just to make sure i didn't get any battery acid on them and then we're going to do our test and make sure this thing works properly all right, so you can see that it's plugged in. This just light flashing is showing that the battery is on. Let me turn on the engine. 
What you see here is this battery because it's been like 20 degrees Fahrenheit or like minus maybe five or six degrees Celsius. The battery is below its uh, cold charging protection shutoff. And so this one, because it's been in the van, will not charge no matter what I do unless I warm it up. So let me get that new Blue Eddy and hook it up and see if it will charge that one. And if you don't have one of these tools, I strongly or highly recommend getting it. You can use that to easily undo these MC4 cables very easily instead of trying to use your fingers and smash everything in and out. In fact, for probably the 30 cents it costs to make something like this, I'd love to see these just come with every solar panel or every little item that you get that requires MC4 connectors. <laughs> And so this new one is the Blue Eddy Elite 200 version two, which is perfect for my minivan camper. It has almost all of the features of that AC240, except for a few that I'll discuss in a follow-up video where I do a complete test and review of this power station. But for my application in my minivan, this thing is perfect. It has an XT60 output and MC4 connectors. And with this system, you can hook up two separate DC arrays. And so what I'm gonna do with this, and in fact, in my last video, I said solar is obsolete. Well, now I'm gonna use solar and DC power from my vehicle's charging system to keep this Blue Eddy topped off when I'm on the road. I'm gonna trust that Blue Eddy wired this properly. We have DC1, PV1, DC1, PV minus. So this is for one DC. And then we have DC PV2, DC2 PV2. So this is one set and this is another set. And this XT60 cable is perfect for many of the other power stations that I use. So this charger one will be useful for almost any of the power stations that I have. I really hope that this is not reverse pulled, but if it is, luckily all these devices have reverse polarity protection. That's just the lazy way of saying, I'm not gonna go dig out my volt ohm meter, but if you wanna make sure you're doing the job right, I highly recommend that you check the voltage and polarity of anything you're plugging into anything. Another thing I really like about this Blue Eddy Elite 200 is that everything is on the front except for the AC input. So everything's plugged in and ready to go. And in fact, it's, it started up charging just briefly and then it stopped, but it is still all accurately hooked up. And what I wanna do now is get the vehicle started so you can see how the system charges. All right, so it just kicked on. I can hear it charging. One thing is I am using my phone to make this video. And so I don't have access to the app right now, but let's just see what kind of power. I'm not spiking up yet to that 580 watts, which I do think I could see here in a few seconds. Let's check it out and see what happens. So the charger one is hovering around that 560 watts, but when you hit the road and your alternator is running at a higher RPM, it'll be able to provide a much more stable output voltage. So this is the EcoFlow, the new Delta three, amazing. It has a couple of inputs on the back for XT60. So I had the EcoFlow set to a max charge of 95%. That's just a battery longevity thing that I do. Have a max discharge down to 10% and up to 95%. The Blue Eddy products also have a feature or an option like that. But boom, just like that. So I'm curious about the shunt there. I was getting the power into the EcoFlow. Keep in mind, this has been stored in some very cold conditions. So it believes it is at 100% right now. And while I've got these two power stations side by side, I do want to point out, this is essentially a 1000 watt hour or one kilowatt hour battery. And this thing has a 2073.6 watt hour battery, which is over twice the battery power or capacity of the EcoFlow. Now this does cost more. These are both excellent products, but the reason that I love the Elite 200 V2 for my application is just what you get in this small package. And like I said, I'm gonna do a full review of that Elite 200 in the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. So for me, that still leaves the question, is solar obsolete? And while the answer is honestly, I think with this DC to DC charger, and a nice robust solar panel, I'll be able to max out that 500 or excuse me, 
1000 watt input of the Elite 200 and essentially have power anywhere that I'm at all the time. I do a lot of camping in the forest and while I'm camping in the forest, solar panels usually don't break through the canopy. But fortunately, because it takes me an hour, sometimes two, three hours to get to my destination, between the solar panel and the battery charger, I'll never need to plug in this thing to a AC wall outlet ever again. And that's really, for me, the big benefit of this. Over the years, I've done a lot of minivan camping. I've done a lot of Jeep Gladiator camping. And my main theme was trying to struggle to find solar power or AC outlets that I could top off my devices on the go. And now with a DC to DC charger and a solar panel, that issue is no longer gonna be a problem for me. It was such a big concern for me that I genuinely considered getting a hybrid Sienna because a hybrid Sienna has, in many cases, that, that AC inverter built into it. So if you have that vehicle, then this thing essentially is not necessary. Um, but one other thing, one other argument that a lot of folks brought to my attention in the comments was why not just get a ac inverter like a 2000 watt or a 1000 watt inverter use that to charge my battery well the fact there is dc to dc is much more efficient i'm taking that 12 or really 14 volt source and that 14 volt source i'm converting it into in this case a 56 volt source direct into my battery but if i was going to use one of those ac inverters one of those standard dc ac inverters then i would be taking that power converting it to something like 110 volts and then downgrading it again to the voltage of the battery which is about 56 volts and so i would have extra losses built into that process in this case i'm not wasting those losses on an ac inverter all of those losses will later be found inside of this power station itself but this power station has a very low ac inverter consumption rate so this is the most efficient way for me to charge this device for me the biggest challenge is going to be figuring out where i want to park the power station set up the rest of my kitchen appliances and get the rest of my minivan camper set up the way i want it again i really apologize for the mess i've got my sleeping bags and my pillows everywhere but if you know anything about minivan camping you have very minimal space in your minivan and you have so many things you want to take with you so half of the stuff won't make the cut so the last and truly most significant concern that most people have brought up is using the ac charger and running for example my hvac on its maximum fan mode which i normally don't do but there are there is a possibility that if i'm running all of my hvac on its max modes there is a possibility that i could use too much power from the alternator that it's going to not give me enough time to recharge my battery that is possible okay that is definitely a possibility but the alternator is going to put the power out that it's going to put out it's gonna run at its max capability. In the long run, is it possible that I do damage to the alternator? I think it is possible, but like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not something that I'm super concerned about. And so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is it worth the risk? I think it is. I'm gonna have a fully operational charging system in my van. Thanks for watching. If you wanna find out the current price of the Blue Eddy Charger One, check out my link in the video description, and I'll catch you in my next adventure.